Well, good morning, everyone. Don Kramer with the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty. Welcome to episode 79 of Coffee with Kramer and Colleen. My partner, Colleen Schaefer, sends her best today. She's out and about doing some of the real estate thing. I'm actually catching up with her this afternoon. We have two new listings coming live this later this week, so we're excited for that, excited for our clients. So we'll have a little more uh, about that a little later, but it is time for the Las Vegas housing market report for July 2020. So we've compiled the numbers and kind of taken a look to see what's going on. So you have the new the numbers and the data that uh, you need to decide whether or not you want to consider buying, selling, or investing in Las Vegas real estate. So you definitely some very interesting uh, July numbers that we want to take a look at. And sort of then we'll give a little bit of context of what we're seeing so far in the month of August. So let's get started. So we'll begin with our home sales number. So if you take a look here in July 2020, we had 3,316 homes sold in the month of July, single family homes. Now that was up considerably from June, but if you'll notice, we're actually up from our July year over year number. So our July 2020 number, COVID, no COVID, recession, no recession, GDP, unemployment, all that good stuff. We still sold 3,316 homes in the month of July 2020. So that's a very, that's a really good number for this time of the year, considering we're midsummer, And if we move on to the next one i mean just kind of give you some historical sense i mean if you look at um home sales for the last uh, several months even going back a little ways i mean it's still a pretty pretty healthy number here for july 2020. so that is really cool so we're seeing uh, you know the demand is playing out in home sales now if we move into the median sales price We'll take a look there. And we are now at a median sale price, even a little higher than the previous month for July at 330000 So that brings us about 1.5% uh, more than our previous uh, record high of 325. And if you look at it a year ago, we were at 303034. So we've been in the 300000 price range now for well over a year. And we're now kind of move, starting to push into the mid-300 range. Now, will we continue to see this number climb? That's going to be interesting over the next uh, couple of months. Really, a lot of it has to do with sort of, you know, again, it's, it's a market. So it's about inventory, availability, and demand. You know, the good news is, is we are still spurred upon by very low interest rates. Uh, we also still have a lot of migration from California that we're continuing to see. So if we're seeing demand from other more populous uh, neighborhood or cities, markets into uh, Las Vegas, while we still have our unemployment numbers where we're at, you know, we may still see, continue to see demand. However, right now, you know, at 330,000, we do set another record number there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And that is definitely, a, you know, that's 20,000 more than our dip which was april of this year at 310 so just to give you a little context march 319 april 310 may 315 june 325 and july 330 again low interest rates are continuing to drive drive the demand now if we move on to the next slide which is new listings so what did we have new to the market space? Now this month we added, you know, we brought on 3,083 homes onto the market. Now you'll notice that is actually down from July of last year's number of 4248. So normally from March through August, we see plus 4,000 units, single family homes come on the market. We've been in that three to high three range for the last several months with exception of April. 
So we, again, are continuing to not add as many listings to the market as we typically do. Again, so that, coupled with the demand, low interest rates, now you see where that 330,000 median home price is coming into play. Uh, so we added 3,000 uh, three homes, and when you consider it again back to like where we, what we sold, I mean we sold 3,300. So the, the the full effect is not a whole lot of difference to where we're really starting to drive up uh, inventory numbers. Now, when we're looking at it from the full picture here, and uh, we'll tip, take a look there. Uh, we want to next talk about total active homes for sale. So in total homes for sale, we have we ended July with 4,806 properties. So as you can see, we have continued a descent for homes for sale during a given month. And this time in normally in July, you know, June, July, August, <coughs> we typically see a much higher, number than we're currently seeing. So if we look at in active homes, really, you know, really, um, really we're, we're down pretty low. Now we're going to see if August, if we have a bump up or if that will continue to remain uh, relatively low historically. Now moving on to months of supply, uh, because of the number of homes we have available in demand, we're calculating a 1.4 months overall supply in single family homes. That would suggest that we're in a pretty strong seller's market. Now that can change pretty quickly, but if we look at this, you know, the last couple of months, you know, June was, it was a decent bounce back month and July definitely a strong month indicator. And you can look at it historically, you know, our month supply is looking uh, pretty lean as it stands right now. Now again, we are kind of starting to move into the uh, in the late summer period, beginning of the school year. So that's going to be uh, kind of interesting to see how that's going to play on demand while we're still having low, in, historically low interest rates. And then one other key item across the board we're taking a look at is average days on market. So the average single family home is sitting on the market for approximately 41 days. So a little tick up from last month. Um, it could be because of the, uh, we were seeing some houses that were, were probably uh, going into contract that have been sitting out there a little while. So, you know, that's probably adding to the average. But however, again, we're talking about uh, homes that are basically on the market for approximately just under six weeks. So that's still pretty low Considering if you look at our pre-COVID numbers where we were sort of in the high 40s to low 50s, uh, you know, demand even during the summer, which is typically a slightly softer period, still showing pretty well. And then the next couple slides, we want to kind of take a look at what's going on by uh, sales and price points. So if we look at the under 250,000 segment, of single family homes. We had 487 closed sales. We have 416 new listings and we have 605 active listings uh, start the month of August off um, in under $250,000 properties. Our core segment, which is the 250 to 500,000 range, we had 2,352 closed sales. We had 2,647 new listings and starting the month off August with 3,397 properties. Then up into the next uh, price point of 500,000 to 750, we have 343 sales with 493 new listings, total active listings uh, 911. In the mid luxury segment, we have 80, we had 86 closed sales with 138 new listings in the month of July, and we end July with 356 active listings. And lastly, in the over million dollar segment, we had 64 sales, 144 new listings, and active sales for the for over million dollar properties, uh, 551. So as you can see, really, you know, our, our main core segment, the 250 to 500,000 range, 
with 2,500 closed sales and 3,397 listings, we have um, a little over a one month ratio. And that's where you see that 1.4 situation. So sort of the similar thing in the um, under 250 segment. When you move up to the 550 to 750 range, we're not quite um, three months of supply, about the mid twos to 275. In the 750, the million range, the mid luxury, we're in, uh, just under seven months supply. And then in the um, million dollar plus segment, we are just over, um, we're just right around that uh, approximately nine month supply. So as you can see, you know, our, bi our big chunk of the market, which is 250 to 500,000, is really you know, kind of setting, setting, the, setting the bar. And then uh, lastly, if we take a look at the days on market by price segment, there was some interesting changes from July this year versus uh, July last year. Now, under 250, we were on the market for a little uh, more longer than we were that last year. So we're 25 days versus 20. Not too much, but I mean, you know, we're talking, you're still in the three week range. In the 250 to 500,000, we actually dipped quite a bit. So we're uh, just under three weeks versus uh, three weeks, a little over three weeks last year. And then days on market in the 500,000 to 750 segment, we were on market just over three weeks versus uh, last year, a year ago in July, we were just on, we were between six and seven weeks um, on the market. In the 750 to million dollar segment, we're 36 days on market versus 33 last year. And again, we're st sitting out there a little bit longer on the million dollar uh, price point properties at 52 days versus 33 last year. So what overall does July tell us? Well, number one, demand uh, for real estate in Las Vegas has, has, has bounced back and bounced back to uh, compared to a year ago, even a pre-COVID level. So we're showing a fair amount of robustness in the real estate market from a purchasing and sales standpoint, more so on the purchasing standpoint because of the historically low interest rates. We're now seeing some interest rate, you know, we're seeing interest rates for 30 year mortgages in, in several cases below 3%, but certainly at or near 3% uh, point. So that's a very, you know, historically low number. So that uh, plus also migration from other markets, probably more densely populated. Southern California has always been a big feeder for us. But also other places like back east, Chicago, New York, um, New Jersey. Some of those are also, they also contribute to our overall migration population into Las Vegas. And so, you know, those are places where a lot of people still had equity. They're coming in. They're able, you know, affordability here in Las Vegas is key. Now, we're still continuing to keep an eye as to what's going on with uh, the coronavirus and how it's affecting uh, businesses and the economy here, because that is the one, those are probably the points of friction we're still most worried about. Um, you know, school's getting ready to start. Schooling uh, is, uh, looks to be starting off in, it's gonna be starting off in, uh, in an online from home situation. That we're, right now, we're, we're now into the first couple weeks of August. We are seeing demand picking back up here for these last couple of weeks of August. And we're seeing people that are looking for homes with additional uh, space for uh, classroom and home, also for home office space. We continue to hit on those points, but we're seeing those bear out as people's uh, demand for those types of spaces are, um, are being shown. So right now, as far as August goes, we're probably going to see a little bit more of the same effect of July. However, I probably see a, see a slight, uh, so I don't think I see us going above the July num number. I think our, our July number is kind of a little bit of a peak at the moment. 
So we'll probably sales may receive just a smidge, but again, still looking pretty robust. Uh, listings to market, you know, they've picked up a little more so than they did in July. And we're kind of starting to see a bit of a leveling on homes going into market, homes going into escrow, not a not a tightening of the market, but sort of a kind of the, they're sort of working in tandem with each other. Now, that probably is going to bode well also, too, for median home price will probably stay about stable through the month of August. But we shall see. Now, charting out past that point, when we go into September, October, November, there's a lot of talk about the election and what's going to happen there. Uh, I, I think that uh, a fair amount of that is discussion. Now, you know, certainly fall is a little slower time, but with everything that happened with spring and the coronavirus, we're probably, kind of, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of our spring effect now, this time of the year. We may see a little summer effect in the fall, but, you know, again, we're waiting to see if those play out. So, again, you know, just a little big recap overall. Very strong, very strong July in housing. Yet another new median price point. Uh, again, really driven by uh, by very uh, very good interest rates. Uh, unemployment uh, continues to be a concern. However, too, you know the government is working on various uh, plans for the next aid relief package. It's probably taking more longer than we all would like it to be. We'd like some clarity. However, you know. That is sometimes how things take place. So hopefully we will have some decisions and some clarity with this next package that comes out, which most likely will run through the election till end of the year. Kind of take take the the uh, politics of the um, of the relief packages and uh, government involvement. Sort of take that legislation and just sort of put that into one bucket that's solved here. Hopefully very soon that runs through the end of the year, probably will then be picked back up somewhere around the inauguration, depending on, certainly depending on who is elected. So that is our July market housing recap for Las Vegas. If you have any questions or thoughts about what we've shared, love to hear it from you. I know we have a lot of people thinking, you know, there's the, the pending crash. Um, however, as it stands right now, if we kind of go off of the core logic um, uh, plans, and I want to kind of touch base on those. Originally, they were saying by a few, uh, by about late spring of next year, we were looking at about a 22% dip, and that was coupled with a couple of months here during the summer of median prices dropping. However, we've seen median home prices increasing, and I'm going to be curious to see if um, core logic has revised those numbers. So again, you know, I'm still probably where if you know if we're kind of look trying to forecast, the forecast is probably sometime next year, um, you know, maybe a, a slight dip, uh, maybe about five percent of median home price to a, a, a slight increase of maybe five uh, percent. So it's probably in that bandwidth. And as I did a video a couple of weeks ago, it's kind of like plotting a hurricane. It could start in Miami. It could wind up in New York. But you know, as we get more data, as we get closer, we sort of start to see a picture take place and can chart a um, chart a path. So, but at least we know what the path of July was. It was strong. August still still looking pretty healthy. But let's uh, you know we've got a few more weeks there. So again, on behalf of my partner Colleen Schaefer, we appreciate you tuning in today to our july market report if you have any questions definitely do us a big favor reach out to us about buying selling or investing in real estate because we're here as your resource to make sure you have the information necessary to make the right decision till next time have a wonderful day take care bye bye